right, there's a lot of talk about CMOS, right? I just want you to clarify in regards to uh, pool, I don't want to say manufactured or harvested CMOS versus wild CMOS. Can you clarify that for me, please? Yeah, there is definitely a variety of CMOSs on the market right now because it's it's a boom. Everybody's interested in CMOS. It's, you know, so beneficial for us. And um, they're definitely going, large manufacturers or other companies are going to start to produce this because they see that there's commerce in it, you know, so we have to be cautious where we're sourcing it from. And that's why a lot of people are very comfortable sourcing it from me because I've lived in the Caribbean for so long. I have a lot of connections there and I source my sea moss from Jamaica. I get some from St. Lucia. I have a lot of acquaintances and friends and brethren and sisters down there that still will send up and, you know, provide me up here with the, the sea moss and the other herbs that I get from down there as well. So I do think that there is pool grown sea moss. And I have mixed feelings about a lot of this because I've also lived in the Caribbean for a long time. And there's been times when I ask the, the fishermen that go out for my sea moss to get it and they won't even collect it for us. They, they know and respect the sea and understand that you can't always be taking stuff from the sea um, because times, there's times that the sea is purging itself, you know, and they're cleansing itself. And, and then also as the sea becomes more polluted, I get concerned about the plants that are growing there. I'm huge into seaweeds. I eat a variety of different seaweed. I'd eat sea moss and, and bladder rack and dulce and just so many different seaweeds that are ben ben beneficial for us. But thinking about the pollution that's in the sea now, I do have a little bit of concern with the, the I, I eat a ton of sea moss. I probably get a half a cup of sea moss every day in my sea moss tea and my smoothies. I bake with it. I put it on my skin. It's, you know, it's really, really beneficial for us. So you know, I'm mixed with that because I feel like sometimes in the, the controlled environments, maybe it wouldn't be so polluted, you know, but it is not the original source and it's not growing in its original environment anymore. So we still want to be cautious with getting the pool grown sea moss, you know, and it's always best. Purple sea moss is amazing for us. It is better because any type of, again, pigmented food is going to have higher levels of nutrient density and then also higher levels of antioxidant properties, which goes in and cleans out our cells. So the purple sea moss is great and it's a little bit harder because it's further out in the sea. It's a little further, you know, in the depth of the sea as well, too. Um, but golden sea moss and purple sea moss, I, I, I do still think, you know, pretty much everybody should be taking sea moss for sure, any, except for anybody with uh, thyroid issues. You brought up a great point. We did a short documentary on the ethnomedical history of Jamaica. And I also had the concern about like digging up Cheney root and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Because as they're getting popular, right, they, they weren't made for mass production. It's exactly. just naturally there for that uh, small demographic in that area. And they're digging up all these things, but they're not putting anything back and they're not growing back. So my concern is that like because it's a fad and people are just using it to use it, Will it be available for us in the future? The right, I herbs. yeah, I definitely see that um, as an issue as well. And actually, Jamaica and some of these other countries are putting regulations on this now. You have to have an import-export license. They're trying to regulate it because they understand, probably first of all, the value of it too. You know, and and the fact that if we are just taking, like you say, we're just taking from it, we're not, it's not sustainable and we're not replanting that. That's why one thing I want to have is like a garden, a, a, a place, a farm to be able to just grow herbs, you know, to be able to give back and put that back because some things are very difficult to get. I mean, we're all looking for, again, the sassaparilla I mentioned, and that's very far in the red dirt mountains and you have to, you know, it takes a long time to grow a lot of these things. So that sustainability and that wild crafting is really important that people respect the land and, and still make sure that we're replenishing it as well, for sure. And, it's, and even though it's difficult for some of us that, you know, want to be healing people and want to be bringing these things out, that it's, that it's regulated so much, I also respect the fact that it needs to be regulated for people to still have, have that, you know, have those plants there as well. All right, I want to get into herbs now. I know you, you deal with herbs heavy, right? Uh, what are about five herbs you would recommend? Can you tell us the herb and its benefits that people should be taking on a daily basis? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, there's so many herbs. I absolutely love a variety of them. I'll, I'll start with some North American herbs and then talk about some Jamaican as well. Um, nettles is probably one of my favorite North American herbs because it's just highly nutritive, has a lot of vitamins and minerals in there. It's, you know, 
increases the chlorophyll in the body. It has high levels of iron. It is an alkaline herb as well. Very beneficial for allergies, for detoxification of the cells, of the lymphatic system as well. So that's a powerhouse herb right there. Um, that would be stinging nettles, you know. And burdock root, definitely, I think everybody should be taking burdock root because it it's going to be cleansing the blood and it's really important with all the toxins that we're taking in and the environments, even if we're eating very healthy. The environmental toxins, the metabolic toxins that our bodies produce just from even eating healthy food, we really need to make sure that we're cleansing out our blood and burdock is, is a great herb for that. But it's also, again, high in that iron. So it's going to replenish the blood, build the blood, strengthen the blood, and just overall just really increase your energy and stamina because it's giving you those nutrients as well. Um, could you, uh, before you get into other herbs, what are some other things people could take to get iron? Um, by eating, I, I do like to suggest instead of just supplements, sometimes I really like to look at our food and implement the, the foods that we're eating to be able to get our nutrients as well. Um, black mission figs are very good for iron. Molasses is also high in iron. Um, there's a variety of different, you know, a lot of herbs are going to be in that space. Um, I would say callaloo, which is a Jamaican green, you know, that's very, very high in iron. And then also green banana. That's something that in the Caribbean is utilized a lot. And that's really, really high in iron. You notice when you boil it, actually, that the skin of the, the banana actually turns black. And that's the indication that there's, uh, you know, that high, rich nutrient density in there. That's great. All right. Um, other herbs you have for us? Now. Yeah, other herbs. Um, cleavers is another North American herb that it's, it grows everywhere. They thought at, in the beginning it was weeds, you know. It's kind of like dandelion, you know. It's just like, oh, this is weeds. But it's like, no, these are the medicines. These are the plants that we're supposed to be using. But cleavers is um, a great lymphatic mover. And I'm huge into the lymphatic system health and draining and cleansing of the lymphatic system because it's basically, you know, our immune system. It's how our body delivers all of the vitamins and minerals. It just, it's our interstitial fluid that flows through the body and filters out all of our toxins. So cleavers moves our lymph through our body, through our lymphatic um, lymph nodes as well. So it's gonna help eliminate those unwanted toxins, excess waste in the body. So cleavers is really great as well. Looking at some Jamaican herbs, sassaparilla, of course, it's a powerhouse of vitamins and minerals, but definitely that iron content that we're looking for. For men, it's gonna increase your testosterone, your sperm count, your virility overall, you know, just gonna really give you that powerhouse as well. I work a lot with guinea hen. Um, that is a lot stronger of an herb. It's more specific for going in and clearing out cells that have been mutated, and usually that's in the form of um, like when, when cancer represents itself in the body, that's mutated cells. And when you can go in and you can get an herb that's going to cleanse that out and to you know, regain that healthy cell. Um, you mentioned cheney root, again, very, very good, high density of nutrients. And I think a lot of the Jamaican herbs have such nutrient density because the soil is so nutrient dense there still. You know, the sun is also just, you can feel the difference with Caribbean herbs. It's, it's just, you know, a different energy about them for sure. And then how they're cultivated as well, kind of, you know, they're very, they still really respect the land there, you know, so the sassaparilla is really, really beneficial for you as well. And soursop leaf. We all pretty much know about soursop leaf now. It's very common, but it's really, really beneficial for the central nervous system. It's also, again, something that's very beneficial for carcinogens in the body or once our cells have mutated into that space, um, that it's known to be some, somewhat more beneficial than chemotherapy. A lot of people and a lot of studies have been done on soursop leaf for that element. And I also look at it for helps repair our central nervous system, especially here in America, people are really in a state of fight or flight a lot and our autonomic nervous system and we're just out of balance with a lot of things and we are faced with a lot of stress and people are dealing with a lot of different things and soursop leaf really, really calms the central nervous system and repairs and heals. So anybody dealing with any type of nervous system disorder, shaking, anything like that, a lot of anxiety, <coughs> restlessness, sleeplessness, soursop is really, really beneficial for that. What are your thoughts about edelberry? Um, elderberry, I think, is a great, um, again, it's a very, you see the color of it. It's a deep pigmented food. So that's going to show us that it's going to have a lot of our um, antioxidant properties, going to cleanse our bodies. But 
it's really, really beneficial for fighting viruses. And I actually did, amazingly enough, I did get COVID for like two days. And when I got it, I had everything at my fingertips, which was great. And I started taking elderberry immediately. And I could actually feel it in my body. I could feel my body getting stronger and just, it, it, it felt like I had more resistance to anything that was trying to attack it. And, and in two days, I was better. You know, I felt, I mean, a day and a half, really. And elderberry, I think, just really supports the immune system and the, the boosting the body so much that it really, really was beneficial for that. And again, fights against all viruses of the body. My break drink chef, Mike, in Brooklyn, he, he gave me a, a big portion of, uh, what is it, elderberry? Mm -hmm. Elderberry, aloe vera, and some ginger, and I boiled it down and put it in a bottle. Like my immune system been on fleek taste. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no yeah. I take a little shot of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it protects our cells. So it basically makes it so that virus can't bond to the cell. It kind of like a covering, you know, that like just coats the cell and makes sure it's like just as strong as it can be. That's where we're, when we're getting these vitamins and minerals in our body, it's oxygenating our cells. When we, need, we have to have oxygen in our cells. And when we have an oxygenated cell, nothing can penetrate that. So when we have these high levels of vitamins and minerals and iron and protection of our cell, that's why I look at health is more on a cellular level, you know.